first day of spring and I am planting some of the early cool weather crops that you can plant. In spring I like to use this nifty little seed spacer. It basically just makes perfect indentations into the soil so you can plant the seed very easily and it also spaces it appropriately for the seed and you can also adjust the spacing just based off the divots that it makes into the soil. This thing's really, really simple or really useful to have and it was only $5. It may not be $5 at a garden center maybe where you're at, but if you can find them on sale, they're really, really useful to have. Today I'm going to be planting a whole bunch of radishes and maybe even some beets to see how well they will germinate at this time of the year. It's a little bit kind of early to be planting that but I decided that I'm just going to give it a shot and see how it goes. Whenever I have to plant any of the garden seeds directly into the ground, I really do not like having to just waste a lot of seed and plant a whole bunch at once. I like to be efficient and I like to just try to have them already spaced out to what they need to be. That's why I like to use that tool that I just showed you guys where it perfectly spaces the um, indentations where the seed will go for about two inches apart. And then if I need it to be further than that, four inches or six inches, I can just easily count the indentations and know exactly where I plant. It just makes it a lot easier for me and I don't have to come back in once they emerge and sniff out any um, excess plants. And it also just saves me some money on the seed. In these rows right here, I'm going to be planting beets and radishes. I already have some parsnips that I just planted. Um, those ones you can start really, really early in the season. They're very, very frost hardy. And then they also take a long time to just grow. And ideally, you almost want to leave them in the soil until the next year when you get the uh, snow and the hard frost. And they taste a lot better when you do that.
So I wanted to show you guys really, really quickly um, the garden space that has already been filled up. I have a lot of garlic planted this year. I planted, I don't know, maybe eat like 600 cloves of garlic. And I have some coming up in this row right here. I'm really excited. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with all the garlic, but um, I'm sure I'll find a use for it some way, somehow. The garlics are also really, really good for warding away different types of pests, whether it be um, deer or just different types of insects. The, the scent from the garlic just kind of detracts from those types of pests. So this is really going to help just deter any kind of um, varmint or whatever you want to call it from eating all our vegetables. Lastly, guys, I want to show you in the house what I have going in the grow room. My starts this year have been doing really, really good. So I'm going to show that to you guys right now. We're in the grow room now and I wanted to show off my starts. These probably have been the best starts that I have ever grown in any growing season. I started these a lot earlier than what is normally recommended for vegetable starts and I have a lot of broccolis, cabbages, brussels sprouts, onions, celeries, lettuce, just you name it. I kind of have it growing right here for right now and they're getting so incredibly vigorous that I'm probably going to need to move these out into the greenhouse just so that they can get even more light and probably even have to transfer them into bigger pots. Um, my, basically what I'm getting at is my tips for when you're trying to grow your own starts. So I actually would say grow, start the seeds a couple weeks earlier than is normally recommended. It just seems like I don't know, I'm not having any issues with them becoming root bound or not growing as well. And also just use a lot of the fish fertilizer that you can mix into water. That just seems to really, really help them boom when you give that to them. Um, my whole goal was to kind of have starts that look like what you would get at a nursery. You know, they're kind of really vigorous, really big, all that stuff. And you don't have to wait so long for a harvest once you plant them in the ground. The other thing I did do, which I've mentioned so many times in other videos, is I used the soil block makers, which are just um, like a metal contraption that just creates perfectly square cell blocks of soil and you can just easily plant into those blocks and then it will, as the plant grows, it will air prune itself so the roots do not become root bound and just start kind of growing all over the place. Um, but obviously when they do get to a certain size, such as these starts have gotten to, you do have to transplant them or put them straight up into the ground. Thanks so much guys for joining me. This was just kind of like a really quick just garden update. I'm here all alone at the cabin and I just wanted to show you what you got, what I got going on and how well they're doing. In the comments below, let me know what you guys are planning on growing this year or how your starts are doing and I'll see you in the next one.